Chuck, do you want to go on a space voyage that lasts longer than your own life? Hmm. Yeah. Let me think about that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Stupid question. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm guessing the answer is no. Oh, okay. yeah. That's a very, very good guess. Okay. Because we can travel to the moon. Right. That's like three days. Mars is nine months. Um, some other planets, a year, two years, five years. And we could probably get to the outer solar system in 10 years. That's within a human life expectancy. Right. All right. Now, there is a rule in science that never engage in an experiment where you don't get the results until after you're dead. All right, that doesn't. It's not good for your career. Okay. So, so you want stuff to happen in between. But here's my point: until we discover wormholes or, or warp drives or something that could greatly shorten the time it takes to travel the vast distances of interstellar space, journeys across the galaxy will be hopeless unless we take on a different understanding of space travel and say, here's what we're gonna do. Let's put astronauts on board that know they will not be alive when they arrive at their destination. Wow. But those astronauts will have to be fertile so that they then mate, have babies, raise the babies, they die, now the babies are helped, the, 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 the next generation is at the helm of the ship. And then oh. they have babies, and this continues. So there's a word for this. We've already thought this through. They're oh. called generational ships. Oh, I thought it was called sex. <laughs> no, it's called <laughs> generational ships. Generational and ships. You'd have to control it because you don't want to make too many people, you need the right number of people, plus you have to train them. All right, you have to educate them because you need your engineers and your do medical doctors and your, you know, your 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 uh, space cadets, whatever. So, so, so this is the. Uh, it's called a generational ship, and it has interesting ethical questions, right? Right. To bring an entire generation of humans into the world, whose only mission is to bring another generation into the world with a goal that they will never see. Well, in a way, Neil, that is kind of the spaceship that we're on right now. It's just a microcosm of Ooh, that. Ooh, Chuck getting philosophically deep. So you're saying we already have a generation that we birth. Right. And we train them to try to figure stuff out, and then we die off, and we will never know where that ends. Absolutely. And we're Ooh. all just doing that on a giant rock that's floating through space on a, on a destination to who knows where. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's not even destination. It's just going around it's in circles. just going around in circles. <laughs> we're the NASCAR of space travel right now. <laughs> <laughs> So Damn. in a way, um, I, I, I think that that's actually, you know, kind of noble if somebody were to volunteer and go and take on that task of exploration for the sake of, um, you know, the getting to a place and finding out. Uh, the, but would you be able? Yes, you would at some point be able to transmit your findings back to Earth. Right. By the speed of light. That by the would speed work. of light. But, but here's, a, here's an interesting question. Would you ever plan to come back to Earth? Because you'll probably lose all of your immunities that you have oh, if yeah. you grow up on Earth. You know, if you grow up on Earth, you're exposed to colds as a kid, and you, right. you know, and then you build your immune system, and then as adults, you're pretty hardy. If you if you don't have that normal Earth baptism to right. germs, right. then returning could be lethal. Absolutely, yeah. And we think we have it bad now with nut allergies. <laughs> nut allergies. Like you got kids now, just like I can't. I wish I knew what peanut butter and jelly tastes like. I, I can't eat a peanut butter and jelly. I will die. But let me tell you something. I have three children, and two of them can't eat peanut butter. They're like, "Oh God, uh, you're trying to kill me, Dad. You're trying to kill me." So these kids on this spaceship, <laughs> that, that's gonna be the worst. Exactly. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Cut him some slack. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, of course, the spaceship would have to have a way to create energy reserves in the form of food for people to eat. 
Right. Okay. So they have to have an energy source convertible into food. You can have like nuclear energy, but you can't eat nuclear energy. No. Okay. But we eat plants and animals and, and other things. And so, you, that, so they have to figure that out on the generational chip. That's all I'm right. saying. Right. Most of it might have to be food for three generations of people. Right. That's a lot. That is okay? a lot. That, 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 that's a lot. Um, so, but, or what you could do <laughs> before you leave earth, you get a full supply of all viruses and bacteria <laughs> that afflict people. And then every now and then you brush it on everybody on the, on, on the ship. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. <laughs> like all you're right. basting a turkey. Come over here, Junior. You know, <laughs> get your That's streptococcus right. right now. Exactly. <laughs> Time for you to have a little flu, influenza. Here you go. It's time for your influenza, buddy. Right. right. That's, and that way they keep up with the earth. That's all. That's that, You know what? That that would be kind of, that, that would make sense. You know, we didn't really catch diseases before we had city living. Right. I mean, think about it. You have a little community that never saw any other community, had your one little farm, and that's yeah. all they did. And yeah. any disease that ever existed that they would have is already there, and they've and already called, got the immunity. We called them Native Americans. <laughs> you know, they already had their immunity to their own damn diseases. Right. Right. So once you have these enclaves, then they're sort of insulated unless a traveler comes to town. So maybe that fear of travelers has some merit historically right. when you think about it. That makes sense. They could be bringing disease and you never met. You don't know them from anybody. Right. You, you don't know who their pappy is. You don't know. <laughs> but see, now on our generational ship, I'd rather think of it in the Marvel Universe way, mm -hmm. is that something goes wrong with the ship's shield and a radiation accident turns them all into uh, super beings. They at some point return to Earth and we don't recognize them, and they come back as conquerors. So they're our, wow. they're our Chuck. children. They're our children, Chuck. but they Chuck. come back, and they're just Chuck. like so. They we, fly too close to a supernova, or, right? And the radiation field messes with your DNA, right? And they have X Men type powers. Well, you can go X Men or Marvel. Either or, universe yeah, will yeah. accommodate this, and then they come back, and we find out. They are us. They are us, except that they came Whoa. back. This like is like as Planet of the Apes, but in another kind of dimension. Oh, that's true. I forgot. Right, because they returned that. to Earth. That's right. Wow. Yeah. Wow, and then okay. they come back and they go, they didn't blow it up. <laughs> they didn't blow it up. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't blow it up. <laughs> Damn it to hell. Damn, they did. Damn you. It's all still to hell. here. It's still here. <laughs> <laughs> you got to see the movie Planet of the Apes, yeah, 1968 yeah, or whatever. If you, have, if you, if have you haven't seen that classic, th that's, you're that's canon. Out. That's canon. <laughs> All right. So, but here's, there's one thing I haven't told you about. Okay. Okay. Here it is. You can ask the question. By the way, we did a whole explainer video on minimizing the weight of your payload, right. and how important that is when you're traveling. Okay. Absolutely. So, let's ask the question. Uh, if this is a generational ship, that means you're making babies, okay? Right. So could you, instead of having women carry the baby to term, you know, we fertilize embryos in a test tube. Why not carry them to term in some kind of incubating box? Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. So then nobody has to carry babies and everybody, okay. But you also, so I don't know if you've seen this show. Maybe a lot of people haven't because I think it's kind of new. Ridley Scott, who I love his sci-fi approach to filmmaking, because uh, he often keeps it a little more real. He has a new show out called, it's on HBO Max, it's called Raised by Wolves. And it's exactly what you just explained. Oh, so okay. So instead of a box, it's an android. Okay? The android is the box, and the android is, is responsible for- For reproduction. For reproduction. So what happens is the fertilizer. Well, don't give it away. Oh, oh okay. okay. Well, yeah, don't give right. it away. I'm, it's it's actually really good. And so okay, I'm, okay. All I'm right. psyched about it. And you're right. <laughs> I was about to spoil yeah. everything. No, no, no. So here's the question you, that you'd have to ask. All right. If you know what is the box way that does this? Right. If the box weighs more than 
just pick pick a uh, uh, 130 pounds. If it weighs more than about 130 pounds, then it's cheaper in terms of payload. Right. To just have farms of women making babies than farms of these boxes. Wow. Okay. But that's a little creepy because it, it's reminiscent of that show that got so popular. The on, Handmaid's on Hulu. Tale. The Handmaid's Tale. Okay. Oh, yeah, that was Where the, the remaining uh, population of fertile women are making all the babies for this. So, so that's a little weird. Okay. So here it is. The box, while it's pregnant, is still only a box. Whereas the woman, while she's pregnant, is still the engineer or the medical doctor or the flight captain. So, so the value of a payload is not just what does it weigh, but what else is it contributing to the rest of the, of the, of the vessel? So I think what you just proved here is that women are far more valuable than men. <laughs> Basically... <laughs> That's why men are afraid of them, because they can do everything we could do and make babies. <laughs> so uh, anyhow, so just something to think about on generational ships. I mean, there's a lot more than what we just discussed, but it's an interesting dilemma that we have in the absence of warp drives. So Too there, dead? but I, I like your, your Marvel Universe twist on it. They come back and they become our overlords. Yes. And we had begat them 30 That's generations ago. There you go. Wow. Mm. Yeah. Chuck, we got to end it there. All right, man. I do. Great. That was another explainer video. Awesome. There's no end of these, Chuck. I just want you to know, I'll be up in your face all the time doing this. I'm, 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 I am just, I, my face will be here. Okay. <laughs> right, I can't be up in your face if your face isn't there. Thank you for that logical <laughs> reasoning. Uh, this has been Star Talk Explainer. Always great to have Chuck. I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson, bidding you to keep looking up.